Hi, and welcome to Underground Video Network Behind the Counter. This is Mike Boroff. As with me always is Richard Catterjohn. Hello. Stay tuned in this episode. We're going to have an all comic book review. Hi, and welcome back. First up, we've got some big comic book news. Oh, definitely. Uh, looks like a little deja vu from <laughs> last year. No kidding. I... Uh, the news of what are, what are they calling it now? The Marvel Now? Yeah, the Marvel Now. That's uh, what it was solicited here. Or as I like to call it, uh, the new 52 Marvel. Which is pretty <laughs> much, it's the easiest way to explain it. Marvel, I think, God love you, I really do. I think Marvel saw the success and popularity of DC's new 52 and said, hey, why not? Nah, I think they're actually just trying to recycle through. I, I'm going to be a little more optimistic. I, I am too. I, I understand that, especially with the popularity of the movies and everything, the the idea is is to get the young audience while they're still interested. Because let's face it, we all love comic book movies, but the bubble's going to pop here soon. Oh, yeah. So we got to get them all in, and it's really hard to get new readers in. I, as much as I love both Marvel, DC, and all comic books, it's hard to get new people in when there's so much history just clouding the ethernet and marvel kind of already had started this true um earlier this year last or late last year they had that shattered series yes which is basically where this is all starting right in my mind they always said this is where it all starts and i think yeah. they're right because you know we got the new nick jr out of that yes that's right and he looks just like the movie <laughs> it does they've I don't think they've made any secret that they know the popularity of the movie so instead of just trying to roll over old history into the new fold we're gonna we're gonna go tangent we're gonna go aim more towards yeah, yeah. the the movie crowd which it doesn't matter no I, I'm looking at Marvel because they've already kind of done these little slow progressions to a new start a new start mm -hmm. a new start they did it in the 80s they did it in the 90s True. they've started you know and then Wanda did that no more mutant thing Poof. yeah so, which, which makes me wonder if the whole <laughs> the whole Marvel now is going to begin with a uh, no more 616 <laughs> damn you Scarlet Witch no more multiverse one universe oh oh we tried that already <laughs> didn't really work out they tried it twice didn't they <laughs> twice yeah yeah which is ironic because if you think about like DC it's like okay no more multiverse well okay we kind of like the idea of the multiverse um 52 worlds and then before they even had a chance to explore the 52 worlds like you know what ah we're done again so and I mean if you think about it really Marvel did kind of start the whole thing off with the Ultimates line yeah. Granted, it was a new universe, totally separate from the 616, but the the tone was there. Yeah. Like, let's start over and... Well, it was more tone for the, the late 90s, 2000 crowd. Oh, I mean, yes. they were set more for a, a mature, younger audience. Right. We want, we want a little bit more grit in our Captain America. We want a little bit more grit in our Hawkeyes and our And a Hulk. little more naive in Spider-Man. True, Peter Parker, yes. they started back with him being 15. Yeah, it was like they went two tangents. It was like, we need dirty and gritty for the Ultimates, right. but we need innocence and purity back to Peter Parker. And that went away fast, too. Yes, it did. And so did Peter Parker. God rest your soul. New Ultimate Universe Peter Parker. Uh, some of the other news revolving around the Ultimate... Or, ooh, the oh, I slipped on that one. The Marvel Now universe is that, uh, pardon me, I gotta look real quick. Uh, there's already been some, uh, not footage, but um, sketches of what's to come in the, uh, the Marvel Now universe. Uh, the first being from uh, John Cassidy and Jerome Opna. Uh, they've already released some sketches of their version of the future Captain America. I gotta admit, I, I really like the new costume. Oh, yeah. It, their their uh, their motivation behind the new look is they're they're it, it pure. It's way to say it is is they're they're really trying to to contemporize Captain America, you know the skin tight boots, chainmail. Cap nowadays probably wouldn't find that functional. No. To see it look more, very reminiscent of actual current um, armed forces armor, speaks world. You know you've got. The plating, you've got the pockets because, I mean, come on. I, I like the idea of the pockets because the idea that Captain America is just going to get by with the shield, 
probably ain't gonna work. You know, he needs a gadget or two. Smoke bomb, got it. You he know, flare, have, got it. You he know, his belt. He's got the bell, he but I mean, to. I mean, he used to have some bombs yeah. and stuff back in the old True. days. But I like that they're making him look a little bit. I don't. I use the term loosely. Real. I really like that they're kind of melding the uh, the movie version of Captain America's outfit with the same comic book style that we're used to and modernizing it. And if those pictures are any indication of what's to come in the Marvel Now universe, I'm I'm pretty excited for it. You yeah. know. Yeah, maybe give, you know, some other people some other looks. You know, look at Hawkeye. Hawkeye looks just like the movies now. Yes. And that's already been done, you know, and he's got his new miniseries, or no, ongoing series starting, what, next month, I think, yeah. or this month? When, whenever this shows, I think it's August, but... And we take everything, you know, tongue-in-cheek, because if you go back and you watch episodes from a couple of years ago when we started doing reviews of uh, the sneak peeks of the, the DCU. New We're doing the same thing. Oh my god, they got rid of they got rid of Superman's underwear and he's wearing armor and it's ridiculous and look at Wonder Woman, it's so retarded. And then watch like a couple weeks ago, oh my god, I like so totally love. <laughs> I do, I really do. I'll be the first to admit it, I bit myself in the ass. I, you know, they took my Captain, they took my, my Superman, who I love, they changed his costume, I was up in arms about it, and now I look at it and Really, each issue that I open and I see, you know, it, it, I, I like it. So I, I really do. I, I like it a lot. So that's why I'm going into the Marvel now with a little bit more open eyes. So thanks DCU52 for helping me understand Marvel better. And I noticed that the, in here the new mutants are going away. Yeah. Oh well. Well, one of the, the, the flagship titles that they're already tooting is the Uncanny Avengers. Which I'm gonna be honest with you. Before I even really heard anything about Marvel now, when I saw the the poster for uh, the Uncanny Avengers, I just thought it was going to be, you know, after everything here with the Phoenix came to a head, that it was just going to be the two teams merging to, you know, kind of unify the teams. Like, look, yeah. we really kind of hated each other for a while. We need to work together. But then I turned around and I found out, no, they're getting rid of everything. Yeah. So. You know, that, that so far, that's... Phoenix Force has messed stuff up, so you never know. <laughs> I'm, no, I am not going into the Phoenix, the Phoenix Force 5. Which, every time I hear Phoenix Force 5, I always think of uh, uh, Pulp Fiction. When, when Uma Thurman's character is talking about her failed pilot show, Fox Force 5. It's like, oh, wow. every single time that I see something about the Phoenix Force 5, I'm like, where's Uma Thurman? <laughs> you know? It sounds like a bad anime. It does! Phoenix Force 5 sounds like... Like you said, like a bad anime, you know, <laughs> bad voice dub over, you know. Netflix, but, pick that one up. Yeah, look for yeah, look for uh, uh, look for that on Netflix. Uh, so we've got other comic book news. Yeah, we're going into reviews. Yeah, let's, let's review some stuff. That's what you're here for. Um, first up, let me let me knock this out of the way. We're we're a little bit late on it, you know, but uh, the uh, Superman versus the Elite on DVD slash Blu-ray slash digital copy slash whatever they however were throwing. You get it. It. However you want to get it. Um, I gotta say, um, first let me say that Action Comic Books 775, what's so funny about Truth, Justice, the American Way, I would dare say it is my favorite Superman book, almost bar none, uh, just underneath um, Kingdom Come. So this one was kind of like, alright, you're, you're taking my favorite book and you're going to animate it? Bring it. Uh, my review, I, I really enjoyed this. I really did. I thought the, the animation was very good, uh, the voiceover talent was very good. Um, understand that they did have to tweak the story a little bit because I'm going to tell you, for if you go back and read 775 action comic books, man, that was pretty damn gritty. For yeah, it was. Good God! I mean, Manchester Black was, first of all, racist to beat all hell. But he's like, oh, I can get away with saying that. I'm, six, I'm 1 16th Cherokee. Racist! You know? And it was, it was pretty dark and gritty. And it kept a little bit of the grit. You can't you can't have a story with the elite without showing some of it. Without showing some of it. Without showing these are guys to be reckoned with. You know, it's like, hey, what's the point of telling a story about people who aren't afraid to kill without killing some people? Um, I also really liked the. Uh, again, you can't talk about a DVD and the Blu-ray without the special features. Great oh, yeah, special definitely. features. A uh, couple of uh, um, Alan Burnett's picks of the old animated. Uh, Superman, which I I <laughs> loved, you know. Um, also, uh, the the sneak peek at the uh, the Batman: The Dark Knight Returns two feature two feature. Oh God, looks so amazing. That was. I'm glad they're doing it too. 
I, so am I. I was that, so nervous that there was when I first heard about this project that it was just going to be one. Yes. They didn't really announce that from the beginning. No. Um, but what they showed on this, yeah. Phenomenal. It, I can't wait for this one. But my review for uh, Superman vs. the Elite, bye. I, I really did enjoy this one. This is one that I could watch over and over again and really enjoy. This is one that I liked showing. Uh, I actually played this for other people. Um, that I really like because I like showing... People always get on me about loving Superman because, oh, he's so strong and he's so... This right here, honestly, is the reason why I love Superman because he is the good guy. He is the <laughs> inspiration. He is the light. And this, this, shows, this shows how he is can, un, unwavering in his moral beliefs. And can endure through... And can endure, God, yes. You know, he took a beating. <laughs> oh, even when, even when the super crap hit the wall, he did not falter. And this is this is a perfect story. And, yeah. This is a perfect story to show people why I love Superman so much. Rich. Okay, I'm moving over. Uh, just released uh, a little while back, uh, a couple weeks ago, was Cloud Nine Comics app. This is another app, sort of like um, Comicology, mm -hmm. uh, where you can get the Marvel, the DC stuff, and yeah. a bunch of other independents, or Graphically, which is another service True. out there. Uh, Want to mention them? Um, Big but, fan of Comicology. In but case this, you're out there watching mm, credit, you know, I can, use, I can use a few bucks on my account. But um, I want to really point this out because uh, the Space Anthology from 2012 yes. is available for free download on this. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a good thing. There's a bunch of other freebies. I mean, a lot to go through here. Stuff that I really don't even know. Um, a lot of independence. And that's if you're really into the independence scene, this is yes. a good choice to go to. The app is free. Plus, they got ones where you can buy. They have a catalog. Right. Most stuff is 99 cents or, you know, I, oops, I just lost, mm -hmm. uh, whatever other pricing they have, I can't access that. Some $4, they got graphic novels yeah. and stuff, so. Again, another example of uh, my words biting me in the ass was my whole previous, oh, damn you digital comic book, she'll never catch on and there's no reason for it. This is a good reason for it because there was a lot of comic books on this app that I never would have ever would have been exposed to unless I went to a Comic-Con and just happen to meet these people or go digging through the long boxes. I love the availability. I really do. Uh, as I've said before, paper will always be my top choice, but this is an app that really does show what potential uh, digital comic books have because it gives you the option of being exposed to things you, you might not never have been exposed to. I've read things I didn't know was out there, you know, so again, biting me in, biting me in the ass. This is a fantastic website. This is a fantastic app. And they got like the flair and some of that other stuff that was out in the 80s is yes. available on this too. And then I also remembered it was Dyna Girl is available on this. Dyna and Girl, the yes. uh, Justice, um, the team she's with. I'm sorry. I'm a little, I was a little behind on Dyna Girl this. and the Justice oh, friends. And the Uniques is available through this. So. I didn't know that. Um, pretty good little app. <laughs> Downloaded. Okay, what you got up next, Mike? Uh, the other one I got, people are going to harp on me for this one, but uh, I got to review uh, the, uh, and I, I'm saying it my way, it's in my long boxes this way, the Doctor Who Star Trek crossover. Yes, I know, if you look it up or if you look at the book itself, it says Star Trek. Screw you, Doctor gets my top billing. Um, I know I just reviewed it and like, oh, Mike's just being Mike, but God, this was fantastic. This, is, the first two, the first couple issues were definitely building a story. Issue three is is full on. The Doctor and Rory and Amy are walking around the Enterprise. You know, stuff's getting real, and especially the third one. Oh, I love the third one because, without giving any spoilers into it, this is the the Star Trek universe is not the Doctor's universe at all. We're we're talking like Idris and in in Uncle outside of the universe, you know, but what's interesting about it is, is being, just being in that universe, the doctor's starting to get memories he didn't have before. One perfect example is he goes, oh, look, there's a Klingon. Then he realizes later on, till about five minutes ago, I didn't know what a Klingon was. But one of the best flashbacks is the doctor starts remembering the first time he actually met the crew of the Enterprise. And it's actually the fourth doctor meeting the original crew, Scotty, Captain Kirk, uh, Bones, and Spock, which is ironic because it's a flashback, but they're new memories. And just, 
just seeing number four, you know, back on print. He's got the hat. He offers him a jelly baby. Which Here's another thing, too, that I loved about it. It surprised me. Even with the cover that had the fourth Doctor and the original crew of the Enterprise, I just thought it was a, a cover. Oh. I thought it was just a quirky, hey, you know what people would like? Then I'm like, flip, flip. It's the fourth Doctor and the original. Oh, I loved it. You will... Man, I, I, I nerded out. I really did. But again, the art was phenomenal. I liked that they changed the art style. They almost went like Wizard of Oz on you. You know, you had this style of art for the main yeah, story. Cool. And then once he does the flashback, it's a little bit more innocent, a little bit more um, old school to really signify the, the change in time. Absolutely love that. You get a chance to uh, Doctor Who, uh, Star Trek crossover, and pick that one up. And I'm happy that I actually found the photo cover to the first episode. Or issue. Sweet. So, Love me a photo cover. Okay. Damn you alternate variant covers! <laughs> well, I'm staying a little independent here again. Oh, uh, make me the sellout. Dark Horse Presents. Uh, issue 14 just came out uh, two weeks ago. Yep. Um, we actually got to uh, talk to one of the writers. It was one of the stories in here, Chad mm -hmm. Lambert. Oh, we love Chad. Uh, he had, uh, he's got a story in here, Radio Gaga. And it's about him as a DJ, which mm -hmm. he was a DJ and so uh, stuff. So um, get a chance to pick up. I'm talking about the Dark Horse Presents line because actually it's a thick book, 104 pages, oversized. I mean, you can find anything and everything in these books. Uh, there have been 14 issues now, so it's just a little over a year out for mm -hmm. the new run. And these are these are massive stories. You yes. can find anything and everything. I mean, this is flip book side. Nexus is on the back. Yeah. I mean, there's a Nexus story. And there's other stories that you <coughs> know. And then if you piked up some of the, the back issues, which I would totally recommend look through, you have Aliens, you have Buffy, yeah. you have a hot podge of everything from the Dark Horse universe. Yeah. And this is a good way to pick up on new stories and um, sample a little bit. Maybe you'll try something else. It's like five pages short of being a trade. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, you yeah. get your bang for your buck on that one. Honestly, when Richard first showed me that one, I just, at the corner of my eye, when I looked out, I go, oh, he brought me a, a previews catalog. Like, oh, this is a comic book. <laughs> like, damn. So yeah, yeah. If, 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 you want, if you want to spend some money wisely, that's a good book right there, because that's worth the money right there. Oh, definitely. Uh, and they had Tarzans in it and yeah. everything. I mean, they previewed a lot of stuff, and that's what they were famous for back in the right. 80s. Dark Horse Presents was the comic to get where you got to sample everything. Yeah. And they're doing it all over again. At least it's not digital in MySpace anymore. Mm -hmm. So, um, you got anything else? I do, um, because I'm a Whovian. and I, I have to mention... <laughs> Um, I love this. The current issue of Entertainment Weekly, Sports of Familiar Face. No, that's not me with uh, hair and my beard shaved. That is the doctor. And you might be saying, oh, big deal, Mike. Oh, look, he's doing something else, Doctor Who. You understand, this, this is important. You know why? This is the first time that Entertainment Weekly has had, first of all, the doctor on the cover. Anything British. And it's not Comic-Con. And it's not Comic-Con. They're doing this just on the merit of the show. I mean, to me, this, because Entertainment Weekly is, is a big magazine, nationally syndicated, you know. This is, this is one that everybody picks up. And even they're starting to say, hey, the Doctor Who thing getting pretty good. I mean, we better, we better jump on this one. So it, it, it really does make, uh, make me happy to see that uh, not just, I would say, the geek community, that the United States in general is... Finally, starting to see how <laughs> awesome the doctor is. Which almost, I almost kind of hate because I like that hipster thing where you don't know who the doctor is. Well, oh, oh, you know, <laughs> I like seeing him popular. Another great article on this one is that they give their top twenty-five greatest um, cult shows, movies of all time. I am one thing I am a little disappointed on. Firefly was not in the top ten. No, it was like what. <laughs> But it, but it was mentioned, though. It was mentioned. But seriously, I mean, honest to God, even, even anybody, anybody who's like a, a Buffy the Vampire Slayer or X-Files fan, when you say cult favorite, yeah. man, almost everybody goes, oh, Firefly, them people are, them people are passionate. Them people are, uh, you know. I mean, what other, ah, here's a good point. What other show listed in this had such a fan base that they made a movie? Okay, wait, X-Files don't count. 
Ah, damn you, X Files. Star Trek doesn't count either. Next Generation. No, they don't count because those shows lasted more than you know one season. That was seven years. Yes, you know, so they they and they it's had their five years now. I know. Just the other day, it was twenty five. Yep. So if you get a chance to do something else to uh, to pick up, because there's a great. Um, if anybody I know happens to be watching the show, you know, both of you, and you're absolutely sick and tired of me, Doctor Who this, Doctor Who that, what's that little phone box for? I don't get it, blah, blah, blah. There's a great little Doctor Who one, uh, 101 in here. Read it, understand what I'm talking about, and I will shut up. So, there we go. Entertainment Weekly, pick that up. This is Richard's. I'm going to steal it later. So, that's pretty much all I've got, Rich. I've covered everything Doctor Who I can think of this week. So, that's, yeah. as we all know, that's all I've got. I think it's been a pretty solid episode. Yeah, there is so much. I, you know what? We're not even really midway through the summer yet, and there's still so much to look forward to. And convention season will be starting pretty soon. That's right. Uh, September's a big month. Uh, we'll be starting out down there at Cincinnati Comic Expo, we hope yep. to, and throughout some other stuff. And we're going to add a new one in. I just added the other day, Akron uh, Comic Con in November. Yeah. So um, it's going to be fun coverage. Do what we always do, we hope. Yep. So if you uh, ever get tired of just seeing pictures of me on video with the Fez and you want to see it in person, we'll give you a list of where you can come and find us. Until then, stay tuned.